Right, I've got new wedges. I've gone full face. So same RTX, slightly different design, but in full face. Let's talk about what they do, what they don't do, how they might help you. Well, they might not make that much of a difference, but I do like the look of them. So to start, full face isn't new. We had, was it Callaway did it first? Ping might have even done it first. I'm not sure if they put the grooves. I know they went high toe, but maybe in the comments you could let me know. Um, Callaway went this way, then Taylor May did as well in the series of wedges, and now Cleveland coming into the RTX we uh, wedge. So what does it mean? Basically, we've just got a face full of grooves. So right up to the toe, we can see there's grooves on the whole face. And why might this be important? Well, when you hit certain shots, certainly if I start doing this to the face, so start laying it open, flop shot kind of ideas, strike point will go diagonally for me up through this toe into this point. I've got plenty of shots out of semi-rough where you can see I've hit it up here. So having a little bit more up there in certain situations might help you gain a fraction more control, uh, like a fraction. But for me, really, I'm not sure you're going to see this one. That strike was high and off the toe there, so it was about here, this one. I mean, obviously, normal grooves might get there as well, but having that extra little bit of leeway, like I say, in some little situations, might just help. Let's go and look at the tech of what Cleveland are saying about these wedges. But just before we do, I will have to say there, one of the main reasons for me putting these in over my standard RTX, and I sometimes think in golf, the word tech is kind of, you know, like that's the reason I spent my money. But the reason I put these in over the other is I just like the look. I saw them months ago, and as soon as I picked them up, I thought, oh, I just really like the look of that. I love the way the lines just go up to the toe. I love the way it frames. And for me, even if the performance was exactly the same, like I couldn't find the difference in performance that we're gonna see from the tech now, that would still be a reason of why I might go for these. Now, would I spend money to do that if I already had a good wedge? Probably not, uh, and I'm not saying you should do either. Again, like with anything, you should test them yourself, go and find out what works best for you. Will a better look inspire some more confidence, those kind of ideas, that kind of, you know, that stuff that can't be measured, the stuff that's in there. Let's go and see what Cleveland are saying about them. So obviously it kicks off with the full face grooves. That is hosel to toe groove pattern, basically across the full face. This allows you to hit shots off the toe, which lots of us do when we're chipping, and you've still got the same kind of control, spin control, or consistent spin, that you would if you were trying to contact the center of that face. It's also got the high toe profile. This is allowing you to convert those open face shots that I'm talking about in this video as it slides up and up into that toe. Not only is there grooves there, but there's also a little bit more oomph in that part of the toe, but they're still not changing the look. It still has that refined RTX kind of player's look to it at the same time. We also have zip core, which we see in the RTX wedges also. A low density core allows them to move the center of gravity more in line with your strike point for the fuller shots, giving you a more consistent launch and spin. Again, all trying to control your distance. Multi-zip grooves to try again, get that consistent spin level across each shot. And Cleveland is saying they've got a new heat treatment. A measured time blast heat does wonders for wedge durability. Again, if you think about it, everything they're doing is trying to keep They'll, they'll talk about spin being high. For me, it's more about trying to keep spin consistent so you don't get flyers if you've got a consistent spin. If you then apply any kind of consistency of strike, you're going to get a repeatable, usable short game shot each time. Because all intents and purposes, with all that tech, when I hit the shot, again, I'm not feeling any different certainly in a pitch shot like this it just feels the same which is good that's what exactly what i would want it really is i just love the way they appear they look down by the ball so in my bag i have a 52 and a 58 they're just the two wedges i have and then i jump to a pitching wedge so i've got the 58 with nine bounce mine's also from the tour rack 
um, selection which gives you some options of different grinds which is just a bit of fun and it just gives me a grind exactly that I want to use at the moment because I am feeling a bit more confident with my chipping but the 52 I have is a nine bounce as well this is just the standard one obviously I've got that in the full face and the main reason for that is one of the main reasons as I just said you know even though it's packed with all that tech um, I just want the look of those to cross over. I've got two different finishes. You can see there's different finishes coming through as well. So you can go from tall rack to different finishes. But I'm not really going to be using the full face very much in my 52 with the style of shots I play. Let's just play a few shots around the green with the two wedges and we'll show you just how often you would actually use that kind of full groove idea. Or again, is it really just that I like the look of them, which it kind of is. So I'm just off the green. I've got plenty of grass around the ball. It's sat up a little bit. This is now a situation the green runs away from me a little bit. This is where I'm happy that the high toe and the extra groove is there. I might not even use it, but I'm just going to slightly add a little bit of loft to this club. Just turn it, try and get a bit of height. Chip's done quite nicely. That strike, I'm not sure if you're picking it up again, was a little bit high and off the toe because I've got the club this way as I come through. The ball is riding and skipping and catching, grabbing up at this point. So this is a situation where I'm just happy the high toe is there. Has it given me a better result? Well, I, I wouldn't say it particularly has. Would I give that option up? Possibly not if it's available to me. Straightforward chip, plenty of green to work with. My 52, if I'm gonna play with that, just come in that little bit lower absolutely full face just it's not being activated it's just now a standard wedge it's on a cut lie you know the strike's going to be much more down in the ordinary area i'm not going to be using this bit at all same chip if i was using my 58 going in a little higher but not really going for any kind of flop shots again just not going to use it so what I'm getting from a full face over not a full face is just an added option. I'm getting almost two wedges when I choose to activate it. It might come into play, but there's a high variance on those kind of shots on how it slips and grips up the face. And then you've got the rough and all that involved. When it comes to your standard pitch, I've got a standard wedge and I'm not even going to look or use any think about the top of that club. So in effect, I'm getting two, uh, two wedges kind of for the price of one. So here, a little bit of, well, semi-ish rough at most coming over a bunker green running away this now with my face sitting a little bit turned this way so almost putting the back of it down on the ground this is where i'm happy that that toe has some help and relief up there will i see an actual measured benefit i don't i don't know i don't think you would am i happy it's there yeah i am pretty average strike but the ball's done well There's plenty of occasions like that there where I just struck it, normal spot, didn't activate it even though it was a situation where you could have easily come in. It's, it's a safety net, almost more than it's an actual feature that you'll consciously utilise. So a 52 degree wedge shot here I wouldn't particularly use the high toe or the uh, extra grooves up there. It's not something that's really going to be activated. Again, I'm just going to dial into the looks that I prefer with these kind of grooves across the face. Cleveland are saying it's a flop machine. Should we put that to the test? Should we end the video with some flop machineness? For me, one of the main things to think about with a flop machine is that really, it's not really the safest shot to play. It's a high risk shot that won't go as close as one that wasn't a flop machine. So am I glad it's there? Yes. Will I be turning myself into a flop machine? No, uh, it's a shot I'll use only if I have to because there are high risks. There are bigger variables. I don't want it coming off the top of that toe. I don't want to be hitting those grooves. The fact that they're there, 
I'm happy because I will hit some there sometimes, but it's not the goal to hit it there. So I like the look. I'm happy the safety net is there. It wouldn't change my style of chipping. It's more, it's a little bit like, why wouldn't I possibly? But I reckon I could chip just as well with the standard RTX as well, because I like them too. Post the comments down below, is it something you would try or not? Something that you're interested in? Like I say, nothing really new, other companies have done it. I used to use one in a Cattleway wedge before and I enjoyed it. Um, that's, it is fun. Maybe I should be a flop machine.